All right. Super excited to be here this evening. This is Brian Kane. I am the host of the Coaching Matters group coaching program and podcast sponsored by Fundraising University. And first, I just want to welcome everyone to the Coaching Matters group coaching podcast. Again, it's sponsored by Fundraising University. And we would like to take the time to say thank you to any current Fundraising University coaches and administrators who are joining us on the call today. Fundraising University is the top high school fundraising company in the United States, helping raise over $150 million dollars for programs since its inception in 2009. And they're the sponsor of the Coaching Matters Group Coaching Podcast, where we try to bring mental performance coaching strategies that you can use to help give yourself and your athletes the best chance for success. We bring on special guests like tonight's guest, Zach Sorensen. Now, Zach grew up in Utah. He went on to play his college baseball at Wichita State, where he was a three-time All-American. And he has a statue of himself outside of the stadium, which he would never tell you because he is so humble. But the first time I met Zach, I was there at Wichita State with TCU Baseball and Zach Zach flew out there for us to meet. And as we're walking around the stadium, I stopped and said, wait a minute, that's you. So it was pretty, pretty funny to have that experience. But Zach has gone on to uh, play Major League Baseball. He was a three-time All-American at Wichita State, played for Team USA, second round draft pick, made it to the big leagues with the Angels and with the Indians. And we'll tell you that it was the mental game that got him there. And it was the mental game that kept him from staying there. Zach, then when he got done playing, went on to get a degree in sports psychology, which he will tell you how valuable that experience was. And then he became one of our MPM certified coaches in our first class and is now uh, the mental performance coach, the head of with your 2021 world champion, Atlanta Braves. He's also worked as a consultant with the Texas Rangers organization. He's an author of the book, The Hard 90, which you can pick up on Amazon. And we're gonna make sure we put inside of the chat here. And he's also the host of the Hard 90 podcast every day. Monday through Friday, Zach does a podcast related to the mental game of baseball. Now, whether you're a baseball coach or not on this call, I would highly encourage you to check out the hard 90. I put a link to that inside the chat. We're going to put a link to the book and Zach Sorensen, man, excited for you to have won a world series, brother. Congratulations. And thank you so much for taking time out of your, your parade schedule and everything that you got going on to join us here. Thanks for being with us. Everybody put your hands together. Zach Sorensen. Let's go. Thanks for being here, Zach. Awesome. Hey, hey, thank you so much for having me come. This, this, it's been an awesome whirlwind of events these last couple of weeks. And, you know, so proud of the guys that uh, for the Atlanta Braves and, and what they did and how they're able to do it. It's just a great experience. And, and I was so happy to be a small part of it. Uh, and, and Zach, you know, you, 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 you were a Major League Baseball player. Let's kind of go back to your story and that you, you made it to Major League Baseball. And then, you know, kind of talk about your experience in getting there and then what you learned about being there as it relates to the mental game. Yeah, so I, uh, I had the chance to go play at Wichita State University, unbelievable place to go play and had some good years there and had a chance to be drafted. I was drafted by the Cleveland Indians in the second round. In fact, for you baseball fans out there, they took CC Sabathi with the first pick. They took me with the second pick. <laughs> And so I had a chance to play with, with those guys along the way. As I progressed through the minor leagues, and I think this happens with all the guys that we have a chance to work with or be with or anyone in professional baseball, uh, you know, you get to a point where the game, you know, we always say the game speeds up. I'm just saying the game kind of kind of hits you, slaps you right across the face. Mm. And and then you then you go searching and trying to figure out what you can do to get to the big leagues, first of all, and second of all, to to be able to stay at the big leagues. I, I have all, you know, I, I made it to the big leagues. I didn't play a whole lot when I was there. Parts of two seasons up there, one with Cleveland, one with Anaheim. And I remember coming home and sometimes people would be like, man, you really struggled in the big leagues. You know, what's, what's going on? And I'm like, you know what I learned? And they're like, what? And I'm like, those guys are pretty good. You know, they're pretty good. And, and so as I got through this, I went through this whole journey. I got done playing. I came home. I love the game. I love all sports, but I love the game of baseball. And I'm like, man, I'm going to get back into the game. In what capacity do I want to get back into it? And as I evaluated my game, what I realized and learned is there's some amazing on-field coaches out there. There really are. I mean, I mean, the coaching staffs that you get in, in, in college, in high school, in professional baseball are unbelievable. But I needed something else. And, and as I evaluated my game, I realized that, like you mentioned, Kane, because we've talked about it 100 times, my game, my mental game got me there, but it also kept me from playing and staying longer. Talk about that. I mean, what was it you think of your aspect of the mental games act that got you to the big leagues? And then was it maybe that you didn't know that would have kept you there that now you're sharing with players with the Braves organization to give them the best chance for success? 
Yeah. So, so for me, I, I had all those, those intangibles that you would kind of talk about, you know, I, I was the guy and I, I know it's kind of cliche, but I was the first one there last to leave. My work ethic was not going to be matched. I used to wear a t-shirt around every day that said somewhere someone is practicing. And when you meet him in a head to head competition, he'll beat you. Mm -hmm. And I hated that shirt so bad. When I saw it at the store, I went and bought it. Right. And then I hated it even more. And so I wore it every single day. Right. So that was, that was going to be me and I was never going to get outworked. But you get to a point, man, where, and I think this is important. In fact, I've got a little notepad right here and I wrote two things on it. And this is one of the things that I wrote on. I wanted to drive home tonight. I got this initially from Mark Shapiro, who was my general manager with Cleveland. He's now the president of the Toronto Blue Jays. And, and when I got done playing the game, I was going down to a spring training game with my family. Mark met me there, got us some tickets, came down and sat next to me. He threw out a quote to me that I remember to this day. And he said, he said, the higher up you get in this game, and then he says, for life, you know, even in life, in anything in life, the higher up you get in this game, the less important talent is. And I sat there and I said, I know exactly what you're talking about, but I want to hear you explain it. And he looked at me and he says, everybody has it. Okay. So one thing I learned this year when I was with the Braves is this is not a game of, this is not a talent game. Okay. This is a strategy game. And why do I say that? Because everybody up there has the talent. So I got to the big leagues and I, and I had the talent to get to the big leagues. And then it was like, okay, now I need strategies to stay. And I was like reaching and trying to find them. And all I knew was work harder. That's all I knew was just work harder. Okay. And so I would take more ground balls than anybody else. I would hit more than anybody else. And then I got in the game and it was like, uh, now what? Okay, now what do I do? And I didn't have the strategies. I wasn't empowered by the strategies to be able to allow myself to just play the game. And so mm -hmm. I wanted that. I needed that. And I needed to go find that. You know, Zach, it's when you talk about life is not a talent game. It's a strategy game. And I know we got a lot of mental performance coaches on tonight's call. And we got a lot of uh, high school athletic directors, some of the top in the country who are here, you know, and what I think they all want to get into is what are those strategies, right? What are the specific strategies that you wish you had as a player that you now coach in, in a world champion organization in the world, in the Atlanta Braves. And what are the strategies that the coaches that are on this call, whether they're baseball or not, they can take and they can use to help their clients get results. Yeah. And that's awesome. And we could, we could talk for days about this, but uh, you know, my advice to you is everything that Brian Kane puts out, you need to go get it. You need to go find it. You Appreciate need to study it. it. You need to learn. I really believe that to be the case when I was looking, cause I, I decided I want to get into mental performance and here's why I wanted to make a difference. I knew I could be a great coach and, and I still love coaching because it's teaching and, and, and it's helping, but I wanted to make a difference for athletes in a different way. And there was not, in my opinion, the mental performance coaching out there that's going to take a player from where he wants to, you know, where he is to where he wants to be. And, and so what I needed was, okay, what are the strategies? Cause I would go into my mental performance coach's office. Okay. Cause they have an office and they would sit me down and be like, what's going on? What do you, what do you, what are you feeling? And I'm like, I'd explain it to him. I'm like, man, I'm really good in batting practice. And all of a sudden the lights come on. And it's like, I freeze a little bit, or we say the game, sp it speeds up on me. And they're like, yeah, you probably experienced a little bit of performance anxiety. And I'm like, yeah, 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 that's it. That's it. And they're like, okay, good session. And they kicked me out the door. And then I'd go out there. I'd do well in batting practice. The lights would come on. I'd be like, there it is. You know, there's that performance. Yeah, we talked about that. And then I would just go, well, well now what? Okay, well, well, now what do I do? And so when I started researching, okay, who are the gurus out there in the industry? You know, a couple of the big names pop up, you know, you, you, uh, but what I found popped up more than anyone to me was this Brian Kane guy. And so I jumped in, I researched him and I started looking at his, his past and his history and where he came from. And I started learning about Dr. Ken Revisa and this and that. And I was like, whoa, well, these are strategies. We're not just talking about what you're experiencing they're giving me something to do. And so mm -hmm. I kind of took that from Dr. Aviz and, 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 and BC as well. It's like, okay, what's my next best move? So mm -hmm. these, are trigger, these are trigger statements for me with my guys. Okay, great. That's what you're feeling. So what's your next best move? And then the next thing, my goal was, I want to give you something to go to when you need something to go to. Mm -hmm. So what we do and, and is we teach, we train, and we'll dive into this cane and you keep firing questions at me. We're going to teach them what to do before it happens, because you're never going to fall below the level of your training and preparation. So let's train ahead of time. Okay. Let's figure out what we're going to do before it happens. And then when it happens, you're like, Hey, I know exactly what I'm going to try, what I'm going to do and how I'm going to get my way through this. Mm. I love that. Zach, you talked about, you know, you're not going to rise to the occasion. You're going to sink to your training. Right. And, and you're never going to outperform your habits. You're never going to outperform what you do consistently. So when we talk about like 
training habits, right? I'm a big, I'm a big believer and it was the way of life app. And now I'm using the habit share app and the importance of, of little habits and things like that, like a post game reflection. I know you've done a lot of work with uh, a pitcher who actually wasn't, I believe on the Braves roster when they won the league championship and a guy named Kyle Wright, but then he was put on the roster in the world series and came in, I think it was in game five, Game four. Uh, came, game four came in and had a huge impact in that game. You know, what are some, what are some of the, the strategies that you would use with players like Kyle, or what were some of the strategies that you'd use to kind of help those players create great habits? Yeah. And if you don't mind, Kane, I'm going to share my screen with yeah. you real quick. And, and I'm going to walk you guys through this. I actually called Kyle earlier today and I said, Hey, are you okay if I share your journey in the mental game with uh, the, the individuals on the call tonight? And they awesome. said, yes. Awesome. Are you seeing, are you seeing my screen right here? Yes. Kane? Yes. Okay, and, and it's just me typing. So I just want to, and I'm scrolling really quick right here, okay? And you're seeing all this. This is my work last season with Kyle Wright. And you're going to see a lot of familiar things right here. Three steps, it's in the habit loop, okay? We can break all these down. If you want, if something jumps out at you, throw them at me. Um, and as I go through here, we just started breaking down the mental game. And what you're seeing here is the 10 pillars or what I teach are my seven skills of mental performance. Okay. And we can talk about those. There's the release routine. I thought there's the Aaron judge article there and this and yep. that, but what is so interesting to me, okay. Is individuals, even at that level have never been taught the mental game. Okay. And so this is where, and I, and I was spent a lot of time with BC about this. It's like, I wrote my book last year and as I go around and I talk to coaches and it's not just in baseball, it's in all sport. I'm like, what percentage of the game is mental? And they're like 90, a hundred. I'm like, well, it's not a hundred, but they're like, well, it's not less than 90. And I'm like, interesting. And then the next question is, well, how much of your day do you train the mental game? And they're like, ah, none zero, maybe 2%. And so I'm like, that's why we get so excited. I know that's why BC is so excited. Kane is so excited about this. It doesn't get trained. It doesn't get taught. So anytime we can throw strategies out at you, we do it. So I took Kyle Wright. Okay. And I said, Kyle, everybody tells me you're the best of the best. And I'm going I'm to go right back to the very beginning. I got hired by the Braves to be their minor league mental performance skills coach. Okay. And right after I got hired, I flew out to spring training twice and all of a sudden COVID hits and we get shut down. Minor league season's done. It's over. So I'm like, hey, let me start working with the guys. They're like, nope, we don't know how long this is going to last. Just back off. Settle down. So I went through the whole summer without doing anything with the Braves. And then my phone rings one day, and it was the, it was the major league trainer. And he says, hey, we got a young man by the name of Kyle Wright. And, and he's up here. He's an unbelievable talent. He was the fifth overall pick in, in I believe, 2017 out of Vanderbilt. Big-time player. He's, he's got some of the best stuff in Major League Baseball, but he's struggling. I'm like, well, what do you mean struggling? They're like, he's 0-7 in the big leagues. And I'm like, oh, okay. And they're like, we've tried everything. You know, I know that you haven't worked with anyone in the organization, but can you just see what you can do? And I'm like, absolutely. And I get all excited. So what do you do? I, I, I first I call Kaner and I'm like, here we go. All right. This is this is what you've been training me for so that I can throw strategies to Kyle Wright. So I'm not going to just talk to him and be like, hey, man, you can do it. OK, go harder or just be tougher. Let's let's give you strategies. So I jump in and, and I, I shoot Kyle a message and I call him and I talk to him about the middle game. And I said, I need to know your level of buy in. Where are you at? And he's like, I'm all in. OK, and Kane talks about, you know, the three the three stages of buy in. OK, and he's like, I'm all in. I said, OK, let's see what you got. His next start was in four days. I got on a phone call. I start shooting videos to 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 Kyle Wright. The very first thing I do is. First of all, he needs to understand what visualization is, all right? So um, I, I made a video of him that talks about, it's a highlight video, and I'll show you that here in just a little bit. I made a highlight video for him. That's one thing he has to have. The next thing, he has to have some mental imagery, okay? Confidence conditioning, ball meditation. That's the second thing he has to have. And then third of all, he's got to understand that every single time he goes out there on the mound, it's not about winning and losing, it's about his process. So our job is to learn from it. So those are the very first three things I attacked Kyle Wright with. I got him a video, which was a highlight video to see him doing things correctly the right way. Because, you know, like we do in all sports, but especially in professional baseball, these guys have access to all kinds of video. And mm -hmm. what do you do when you have access to video? You go pick apart every single thing you're doing wrong. Tell them about Manny Ramirez real quick. Okay. All right. Manny Ramirez. And so here's where we got some of this from. So, so I had the chance to, to play with Manny Ramirez. Now, not on a big league field with him, but I was at major league spring training with Manny Ramirez and, and I got to know him and man, what a great player, but a great guy as well. And I used to do this, this mental imagery, uh, you know, 
this video analysis is what I called it with myself every day, man, you go in there and you got video guys assigned to each team and I'd pick apart every swing and I'd be like, yeah, my back elbow and my front hip, you know, and I'd pick it apart. And then I go and, and, and the thought process is, is if you can see what you're doing wrong and correct it, you're going to be better. I agree with that. And so I would watch my video. Now, the problem is, is I was going about it the wrong way. And here's how I learned that. I went up to Manny Ramirez. And I'm like, hey, do you do video analysis? And he's like, absolutely. I'm like, how often? He goes, every single day. And I'm like, wow, is there any way I can come watch one of your video analysis sessions? I said, I won't bother you. I won't ask you questions. I'll just be in the corner, fly on the wall. He's like, sure. So at the same time, every single day, and we'll get into this a ton because routines are everything, right? He walks into the video room. He takes the big set of headphones, puts them on his head, and I can hear his music playing through the Bose headphones, okay? And he's just jamming. Well, first of all, you got to remember back when I used to do it, I would watch myself strike out, strike out, strike out. Why am I striking out? Let's look at it. Let's pick it apart. What's going on here? I'm watching his video and it's like Manny Ramirez home run to left field. Manny Ramirez double to right center. Manny Ramirez home run, home run, double, double, home run, home run. And he's just smiling, got this big grin on his face. Two and a half, three and a half, four minutes of him absolutely raking. Mm. Then he stands up, takes the headphones off and he's got this big chest, you know, body language is just, just he's just pounding, walking out the room. And I'm like, hold, hold, hold on a sec. I promised you I wouldn't ask you any questions. I only have like 10, maybe 12. And I'm like, why don't we watch the other at bat where you didn't hit a home run yesterday? Let's break that one apart. And he goes, that's not me. And I'm like, no, actually, that was you. Okay, you struck out. He goes, that's not me. And I'm like, but, you know, if we can, and he stops me, right? And he says, who's more prepared to go play today? You just watched yourself strike out 18 times. He's like, I just got I just hit 12 doubles and 22 bombs off the mm. guy we're facing tonight. Mm. I'm ready to go. Mm. Huge lesson I learned right there. Before you go perform, that's not the time to pick apart everything you're doing wrong. Now, there mm. is a time and a place for that, right? But not before you go out there. You got to be different on your way out there. You got to seek advantage and gather this information. You got to gather the advantage. We're chasing the advantage. And that's what mm. I learned from that. Love it. Love it. And then I want to make sure, uh, Zach, that everybody who's on the call here, you know, as we uh, are here with the, the Coaching Matters group coaching program sponsored by Fundraising University, over 100 participants on tonight's call to come in and get a chance to interact with you, Zach. And I want to make sure we leave enough time for questions. So if you're on the call right now as a participant and you want to ask a question, please feel free to drop that in the chat. We'll make sure that we get that question asked to Zach. We may pull you in to the call to ask the question. Uh, it may be facilitated easier if you just post it inside of the chat. So, you know, Zach, Zach, let's talk about when you get done playing baseball, right? Because we've got coaches on the call here that, that are uh, wanting to coach mental performance. Maybe they don't have a degree in sports psychology and they're like, well, I'm not sure where to get started. You yeah. know, you went back and did a degree, a degree in sports psychology and came on and did our mental performance mastery certification. Would you just talk for the mental performance coaches on here about like the difference between a degree and, and our certification and then kind of like how to actually get started doing the work? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I went and got my degree. I was in the process of getting the degree. That's when I started Googling, okay, gurus in the industry. And of course, Brian Kane pops up, right? Okay, it's, it's awesome. And, and what's interesting is, you know, sometimes people's faces pop up and, and they're not the real deal. What I found out is what I've learned through Brian Kane is what I teach and what I teach has got results. And, and, and I'm being honest about that. I'm not just here saying that because you know, there's not a, there's not a situation or a scenario that goes by where I don't consult with Brian. Okay. Here's a big one right here. In fact, we need to break down. If you remind me, Kaner, to talk about game two, when, mm -hmm. when Kyle Wright was, you know, introduced to the bullpen in the world series. So make sure I get to that point yep. here, but to keep answering the question, I was in the middle of my, my degree, getting my master's in sports psychology. And, and when I, when I bumped into Brian, so I had the chance to kind of compare and contrast the two situations and scenarios. I will say at the time, um, when I was, you know, right as I was completing my master's degree, my phone started ringing and I, I feel very fortunate. You know, I, I think I have a slight advantage over, you know, maybe anyone on the call because I played in the big leagues. And so my phone is going to ring a little bit. Wow. You played in the big leagues and you have a master's. And so my opportunities were slightly larger. What I realized initially was a lot of organizations, they require that you have a master's degree. What I've also learned is many of those individuals, they get hired with a master's degree that don't have the passion, the drive, and, 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 be, and they can't deliver strategy, mm -hmm. okay? They seem to last about one year in the job, and then they move on to something else. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. but but when you have strategy, you're going to make a difference. Why? Because it's 90% of the game that gets taught less than 10% of the time or trained less than 10% of the time. So if you can give strategy, these players will grab onto it and you're going to see progress. That's my experience with it. So when I finished, I got my master's degree, the, the first team, Texas, they required it. Atlanta, okay. Um, when I got hired by Atlanta, the individual that became the, the, the minor league farm director or the assistant gen general manager was the individual that hired me. He, he heard me speak. And when I asked him about that, I said, you heard me speak. What made me jump out to you? He goes, strategies. Mm. You gave my players strategies in, in, a, in a one hour talk. And I was like, yes, this will work. And I'm like, I actually asked him a couple of weeks ago. I said, what is more important to you, a master's degree? And he says, no, 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 no. He stopped me. He didn't even let me finish the question. Mm. He goes, what we are looking for is to be able to introduce our players to strategies that's going to help them jump on this, this, this train, okay, to start training the mental game and to improve what they've done. And he's like, you have had success here. And so I'm not necessarily looking for somebody who has the degree, but somebody who is the right person. Mm. So what is the right person? The right person to me is somebody who has strategy. They can connect with players, first of all. How do you connect with players? Three things that you need to be able to do to connect with your players. Three things that your players need from you. Number one, they need to know that you care about them. And I'm being dead serious with that. This isn't just a job. I mean, when my guys go out there and pitch or my guys are up to bat, my heart's thumping. <laughs> I'm sweating. Those are my kids, right? Those are my boys and my girls. Number so okay, so they need to know that you care about them. Number two is they need to be able to trust you. Okay. And, and we all understand what that means, but, but my guys know that I, I am going to bat with them. They know that I'm with there with them every step of the way, whether they're doing well or whether they're struggling, maybe more so when they're struggling. Right. Mm. And then and the other thing is that they need to know that I'm going to help them to get better. All right. And when they see strategies that they've never been taught before and they start implementing them immediately, they get better. And when they get better one time, you give them one strategy, they run with it, it works for them. They're just like, feed me more. Let's go. Mm. What else you got for me? Mm. You know, Zach, what I love about it here is, 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 you know, and a couple of great questions coming in here. So keep those coming is, you know, you, you mentioned, you mentioned, um, Kyle Wright and, and yeah. you asking Kyle Wright, Hey, can we talk about some of the work that you did? And, and what, what was his answer? Cause I think we talked about it on the phone before the call, his answer was exactly what Corbin Bird's answer would be if I asked him. Yeah, in fact, I've got it pulled up here. So I'm just going to tell you straight up because I asked him if that's okay. He yeah. says, of course. He says, serious, uh, where are we at? Okay, here we go. He goes, and yes, absolutely. Feel free to talk about anything and everything. It's all good stuff. Think it's important to help out anyone however we can. And I love one that you asked him for his permission first without just talking about it because a lot of people just talk about it and break the trust. And two, I love that he is so willing to give you permission to talk about it, to give back to the game as Corbin Burns would do the same thing with a podcast that I did with him as hopefully he wins a Cy Young here in two weeks. Right. You know, talk about the mental game. And I think this is a big difference in the mental game now as opposed to say when Ken Revisa was getting started 20 years ago. 20 years ago, like it, it, when you were playing, it wasn't that long ago, but even when you were playing, you know, people would look at the mental game and be like, well, this is all some secretive stuff. I don't want anybody to know because if they see me working with a mental game guy, maybe I'm weak. And weak. now thanks to guys like Joe Madden, Eva Longoria, Kyle Wright, the Corbin Burns, who are openly talking about these things that they realize, look, if you're not working with a mental performance coach, you're not committed to be great. How have you seen like buy-in and openness to talk about the mental game transition in your career? Yeah, I agree with you. And I'm going to share this right here. Can you guys see this? Yep. Go ahead and look at those numbers here while I finish talking to you. It, it's absolutely right on. When the mental game guys showed up when I was playing, it was like, don't go talk to him when anyone's mm -hmm. watching mm -hmm. because it's showing that you're weak or you have a problem. We are trying to transition that. In fact, when I go out there, I'm in the dugout. I'm in uniform with these guys because mm -hmm. I want them to know that I'm a coach. OK, just like Brian Kane's got his name on stuff. I have phenom sports performance, you know, process over outcome on a self avail everything that I teach I have on there. And I'm trying to make a big deal about Atlanta Braves performance mm. because, you know, this is something. And that's the other thing I wrote down. I talked about the first one, but we got to get mental reps. And when these guys start understanding that the way for them to be the best that they can be, they've got to start training their minds through mental reps. There you go. So Kyle Wright's journey right here. OK, prior to us working together. All right. 11 innings, 17 hits, 10 walks, nine strikeouts. We put in, so what happens, you know, and I, I kind of left you there. Kyle Wright had a chance to start a couple days later. He gets rained out and then gets sent down to the minor leagues. I call him and I'm like, are you okay? We're only four days into our relationship right here. Right, okay? right. I'm like, are you okay? And he goes, absolutely. This is what I need to work on. And so he's going down to the minor leagues. He calls me the next day. He's like, let's go. Every single day for seven straight weeks, 
we sent videos. To, I sent him a video. And then at nighttime, we got on a FaceTime call and we broke it down. Mm. He gets called back up to the big leagues, takes another loss. Okay, so now he's 0-8 in his career. They're interviewing him after the game, and they're like, man, this has to be so frustrating to you. They're like, you go down to AAA, you do well, you come back up here, and you take another loss, man. This has to, And he, his answer was priceless to me. He says, oh, no. He goes, I am so close. I am right there. I am a different person right now. And I was like, wow, here we go. I was hoping for one more start because, you know, up in the big league, it's like get it done or, or, or you're gone, right? He had one more start that they gave him. It was a Sunday game against the – previous uh world series champions against the nationals and guess who he's facing max scherzer was on the mound he's facing and i'm like oh great yeah we got him one more game he's facing max scherzer with the nationals kyle wright goes out and gets his first major league victory against max scherzer and it was awesome he ends up winning five or six straight after that and a, and a postseason clincher so it was awesome we're here with the Coaching Matters Group Coaching Podcast sponsored by Fundraising University. And once again, we'd like to recognize Fundraising University and owner Mike Bahoon as the official sponsor for the Coaching Matters Group Coaching Podcast and current coaches. If you'd like to be a Coaching Matters ambassador coach in your state and earn an extra five to $20,000 part-time, contact Mike Bahoon, that's M-B-A-H-U-N at fundraising you, fundraising in the letter U, dot net to inquire about our new ambassador coach program. Now, what we're going to do is stop the recording here because we've got a ton of questions that come in in the second half of this, which will be a podcast that comes out next week. We're going to be right back with Zach Sorensen. So on the podcast, we'll see you next week. And on the live call, we'll see you back here in about 10. Brian Kane here, host of the Coaching Matters Group Coaching Program. And we're here with Zach Sorensen. He's the mental performance coach with the Atlanta Braves. And if you didn't catch the podcast last week, if you're picking this one up as part two with Zach, you're going to want to pick up part one because it was unbelievable. You know, Zach, you were talking about, um, you know, Kyle Wright and some of the, some of the mentality and the work that you did with him and the, on the mindset to help get him, you know, over kind of a hump of struggling when he gets got to the big leagues. You know, if you had to take all the strategies and things that you use with baseball players, and I know you do a lot of work with athletes outside of baseball as well. If you had to kind of say, Hey, here's my one to three go-to strategies. What would those one to three go-to strategies be that, you know, coaches might pick up from our mental performance certification or ones that you use within the Braves organization or with any of your clients? Yeah. You know, I think the number one thing that I try to teach and establish, and when I was talking with Kyle or, or, or some of the other guys I had a chance to work with, the number one thing we talk about is control what you can control. I mean, like we mentioned, Kyle was now in our journey. He, he he's zero and eight. Okay. Mm -hmm. Can you do anything about that? No, except learn from it. Right. So what can you control? And a couple of things that really made sense to him and some of my other guys is, is, and so I'm talking to a pitcher right now, but you can apply this in any way. So I'm talking to him and I'm like, okay, on a baseball field, there are two big circles okay two big circles on a baseball field you got you got the pitcher's mound and you got home plate and i'm like where is your focus okay so just to try to drive the point home about control what you can't control and he's like well i'm always focused on home plate because that's where all the action is and i'm like okay so so you're you're telling me that all your focus is at the plate because that's where everything happens and he's like yeah and then i say can you control the umpire yes or no no can you control the hitter yes or no no you know, can you control your catcher? Yes or no? No. And I'm like, so your focus is on things that you can't control. And like we've all learned through this training, when you focus on things you can't control, you become out of control and those things end up controlling you. And, and I think that's kind of a state that, you know, he was in early. He's trying to, he's trying to get results, right? And so what we did is we refocused on the things we can, which is part of process over outcome. Mm -hmm. And we said, okay, the other big circle is, is, is the mound. All right. You can control everything on the mound, nothing after the ball leaves your hand. So let's bear down on that. OK, so and, and, and Kane, I had you, I want you to remind me of this. Kyle Wright gets put on the World Series roster. He had, I think, five or six innings of major league time this year in the big leagues. OK, wow. he had a start against the Cubs and he went about three and third, three and two third, maybe four innings. Uh, he, I think he hit four bats, you know, four guys, you know, it was a cold day in Chicago ball got, so he actually pitched. Okay. But, but, uh, this and that, they sent him down right after the game, bam down about a month later, he gets a spot start. They told him before his start, you're just pitching. Now you're going back on the bus. The bus is here at five o'clock. Okay. Boom. You're out. And, and he had a kind of a rough start. He goes back down to triple a. And my advice to him at that point was Kyle, it's time for you to find your identity. It's time for you to figure out your strengths, your weaknesses, and who you're going to be as a player, and we're going to go with it. He spent the whole year down in AAA, ended up being third in ERA in the league in AAA. Wow. 
unbelievable season does not make the postseason roster does not make the division series roster. Okay. So he's not, he's not going to face uh, the Brewers. He's not going to face the Dodgers. And then all of a sudden they're like, you're on the world series roster mm. and you're in the bullpen. Okay. So I text him on my, like, Hey, congratulations, man. I'm super pumped for you. And he texts me back. Thanks, man. And I could read it to you. Thanks, man. He's like, I'm in meetings right now, but I'm going to call you when I get done. I just want to make sure I got my routines figured out for being a reliever. Okay. So for me, I'm like, how can I help Kyle right now? Or how can you guys help your players in this situation? Because what I'm hearing, he's a firm believer in confidence comes from preparation. And he's in a situation where he hasn't ever prepared. He's at the World Series with 45 plus thousand people. Yeah. And he's going to be put in a situation that he's never been in before. He's not come out of the bullpen probably since he probably ever in his life, right? He was a starter in high school, starter at Vanderbilt, starter as a pro ball player. He's probably never pitched out of the bullpen. Totally. And, and so now all of a sudden he's like, I, I, I think I understand. I mean, it's the same, right? But, and so I started hearing these things, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I look back at him. Of course, first thing I do is I call, I call Brian Kane. I'm like, what do you got? What do you got for me, right? Here's the message we delivered to, to, to Kyle Wright. When Kyle called me back, I says, if you, uh, what kind of pitcher are you? He goes, well, I've always been a starting pitcher. He goes, well, I did, I did come out of the bullpen and close a game in Vanderbilt in the College World Series game. He's like, but that was just that. And I'm like, wait a second. Hmm. Wait a second. First of all, at that time in your life, there was no bigger game. Right. There was no bigger game. So you've already been here before. Remember that. Okay. So he's been in this situation before. Second of all, I said, what type of pitcher did you say you were? He said, I'm a starting pitcher. I'm like, no, no, hold on a sec. What if you were to drop? You're either a starting pitcher or a relief pitcher. What if you were to drop the first part of that? You're just a pitcher. Aren't you just a pitcher? Exactly. And I said, and then, and then Kane gave me some great advice. He says, the, the one I told Kyle, the only difference between the starting pitcher and a relief pitcher is that starting pitchers play catch on the line and relief pitchers play catch on the bullpen. I said, so before your next outing, go out and play catch in the bullpen. Every single day you show up, play catch in the bullpen so that you do it. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, don't forget to make the jog. Make the jog yeah. from the bullpen to the mound. But here's the deal. Here's where this gets fun. We talked about control what you can't control. We talked about you can control the dirt, which is the pitcher's mound. And I said to Kyle, there is going to be a switch. When you go from grass to dirt, that is your trigger that says, I am a pitcher. Mm-hmm. You're not a starting pitcher, relief pitcher, because at that point, it's all the same. And he said that really changed his whole outlook. He gets in game two of the World Series in a non-pressure you know, uh, pressure situation. The Braves were getting beat up a little bit. They put him in there. He goes, strike out, strike out, strike out. Bam, off the field, done. Three punchies. It's awesome. A couple days later, all of a sudden now, because the Braves don't have any pitching, Kyle Wright's going to factor in the World Series. He goes from not even being on the roster to all of a sudden, he's going to be the one in this rubber match that's going to make a difference. Game four, real quick. Kyle goes out there. They, they did a spot start left-handed guy. Base hit, uh, strikeout, walk, walk. Bases loaded, one out, and in comes Kyle Wright. Okay, mm-hmm. and I got a quick video here, Kane, I want to show you. Yeah. Just because you can see, and it's not very long, but you can kind of see some of the things that Kyle Wright is doing. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to find it, and I'm going to bring it back to you. But Yeah, but yeah, we'll, no, stay, you know, we'll stay on that. And while you're doing that, you know, I'll, I'll take on some of the questions that we got here, and I'll, I'll come back to you, Zach. One of these is, okay. that, you know, one of the questions is, do you need to be CMPC certified? Are you, are you a CMPC certified coach, Zach? I am not a CMPC certified coach. In fact, on my book, I have MS written next to it because I have my master's, and I have MPM written next to it, okay, because I'm, <laughs> I'm an MPM mental certified coach. And again, the strategies I get from that are there. So I think, what, I think my answer to those questions is, is if you can get your chance to get in front of somebody, okay, if you can get in front of somebody that is interviewing you or whatever, and you can drop strategy on them and a, 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 a structure for who you want to be, Okay. And what you're going to teach, they are going to be blown away by what you can do. I really believe that to be the case. And that's what the certification course is, Zach, is the strategies that you use, right? Where like this, the, the, uh, have you ever been asked by an employer, the Rangers, the Braves, a college bringing you in a coach who wants you to work with this team? If you're CMPC certified, I never have been me either. And I've been doing this for 20 years. Right. And what I have been asked though, is how are you going to get our players better? How are you going to help us to win? You know, what, what does it look like? How do I do mental performance? How do I go from talking about it to doing it, which you're, which you're bringing up here? And what that is, is that is strategy. And what the certification course is strategies that you can use as a coach to help you be better at coaching mental performance. Would you agree with that? Absolutely. hundred uh, percent. Take, take a look here at this video, Kyle Wright video. 
quick video. Look at this. You can see mental performance training taking place right here. Okay, look at that right there. Boom. There it is. I mean, look at his face, the confidence he has. This is a player who didn't spend any time in the big leagues this year. Two, two. Yeah. I mean, I just want you to see his, his body language and this and that. So this is a guy, just so you know, this is a guy who prior to this outing, okay, prior to this outing, let me make sure we're not still hearing that. You still hearing that? No, you're good. Prior to this outing, okay, his last big start in the big leagues was against the Dodgers, and Kyle right through, I think, two-thirds of an inning gave up six runs. Two-thirds yeah. of an inning, six runs, and then they didn't trust him as a pitcher. They put him on the roster, and look what he does. Why? Why? Why does he do that? It's because of the work he put in. You see, yeah. you're not going to go out there every single day because, you, because you're, you're working the game, the mental game, and dominate. We can't guarantee that you're going to go out there and dominate. Right. We go out there, and there's going to be times where it's, it's going to be handed to you. And, and one quick story about that. Kyle Wright goes out there after winning five straight games in the big leagues last season. He's now facing the Dodgers. If the Braves win, they go to the World Series. He gives up six runs in two-thirds of an inning. Okay. I leave him alone that night. He calls me the next day from the bus. Okay. Driving to the ballpark down in, in Texas. Okay. Where all the games were. I'm like, how are you doing? And he says, I'm doing great. I'm like, why are you doing great? You gave up six runs last night and two thirds of an inning. He goes, well, I wasn't doing good at first. He's like, but we went through the process. Okay. Just like we've done after every single game. And do you know what I learned? And I'm like, what? He goes, I learned that I learned a whole lot about how to pitch because of that game last night. Mm. And so what he did is he went through his process of, you know, and this isn't that exact game. Okay. But you can, can you see this right here? This is yep. like a post game evaluation right here. Okay. This Love is it. his well, better. How? Love it. All right. What did you do? Well, what do you want to do better? And how are you going to do it? And so Kyle pulls out of a terrible you could even possibly use the word frustrating embarrassing loss okay he pulls out several things that he learned from that game that made him the type of pitcher that was able to go out this year in the world series when everybody says why are you giving him the ball okay because every time he gets up there they're like and then he had that game against the dodgers okay and and here we go and he's ready to go it's all because of the processes that he's going through mm. All right. Love that. And, and, and I'm going to keep hitting this. It's mental reps. It's mental reps. You guys want to get stronger in the weight room. What do you do? You do reps. You want to be a better hitter. What do you do? You go hit. Mm -hmm. Okay. You want to be better at ground balls. I mean, the, the Braves have one of the best infield with Ron Washington, best infield coaches of all time. Every single day. It's the routine. It's the routine. It's the routine. What Kyle has done from the, the day we started working together is he created his routine and he stuck to it. He had mental reps every single day. And I promise you, every single, every single experience he went through allowed him to prepare himself to be ready. When they called on him in the World Series this year, when he hadn't pitched in the big leagues all year to say, I'm ready to go and I have confidence because mm. confidence comes from preparation. Mm. Love it. I want to get into some of the questions here tonight. First, three things I want you all to do, if you would, please, to jot these down. Okay, first is I want you to get what we call the Hard 90 podcast. That's Zach's podcast, which you can get. I'm going to post that in the chat. Second one is I want you to engage them on his website. It's phenomsports.com. I'm posting that here on the website. And then the third one would be to check out his book, The Hard 90. Some of the questions came in as, hey, the strategies that Zach's sharing tonight, is it all in his book? It's all in his book. The thing I love about Zach, as you can see by tonight's call, is he is a open book in sharing his experiences to help all of us to get better. So I want to go into some questions here, Zach, from our, from our, our callers tonight. And um, uh, uh, Ashley Davis comes in here. Brett Ashley Davis comes in with a question for Zach. How much did the Freddie Freeman story in leadership create that team culture where they are playing for more than themselves? I mean, Freddie Freeman is, is unbelievable. He is, he is everything that we want to create in a player and, and a person in general. That story was, was so powerful. In my podcast last, uh, last Friday, I talk, I'm talking about leadership right now. And the story I tell is one thing that was amazing about this team right here is when they win the World Series, the game's over. Everybody's like, okay, we can turn the TV off. Nobody turned the TV off after the game because we were all were wondering who was going to be the MVP. Hmm. And here's what's so awesome about that. They could have given the MVP to about six different guys. And what's interesting is when I started breaking down the different players that they could give the MVP to, 
it wasn't just that they played well on the field. It's that they, they have a different leadership quality, okay, that when you put it together becomes this powerhouse. The Braves were under 500 at the All-Star break. They were in third place, and they make a run, and they handled all of those teams along the way. Freddie Freeman leads that team. He, he challenges that team. That's one thing I talked about. He challenges that team. He went to the players in the infield and he says, here's the deal. We played this game every single day. We don't take days off. And I challenge you to be out there every single day. But his story is amazing. Freddie Freeman at the beginning of the season last year got COVID to the point where he was actually praying to a, the higher power saying, I'm not ready to be done yet. Mm-hmm. I'm not ready to come to you yet. And he ends up being the MVP. Okay. That guy has some of this. He really does. And he knows how to lead and knows how to get the most out of his players because that's who he is every single day. About the Braves, three games under five. We said three games under 500 at the all-star break, right? It's the middle of the season. And then they go on to win the world series, proving that the best team doesn't win. It's the team who plays the best. And, you know, Zach, you talked about um, your system and your framework. Like my framework is the 10 pillars of mental performance mastery. Your framework is the acronym phenom question comes in from James Riley. One of the top mental performance coaches in all of soccer, former professional soccer player. I actually did some work with Ken Revisa ironically when he was with the LA galaxy. And, you know, James said, how did you decide on your seven pillars for your methodology of phenom? Uh, and, And did you choose the pillars that best resonated with you as a former player? How did you come up with that? Yeah, I think that's, a, that's an awesome question. I'm going to share this with you right here. Um, th- this is my framework, and, and it's based on, on the acronym PHENOM. Okay, now what the funny story about that is I had a pair of, of cleats that I used to wear on Sunday day games. So baseball, you play a game at 7.05 every single night, and then all of a sudden Sunday, it's like, okay, let's play like at 1 o'clock. Right. And it throws off our routine. All right, so I needed something to kind of jumpstart me and get me going. And so I had these patent leather, shiny you know, spikes that I used to wear and they were called phenoms was I started putting this together, this framework, and it's based on the 10 pillars. Just so you all are aware it's based on the 10 pillars. It's right there in line with it. It seemed to match up for me. So me, it's process over outcome, honest self-evaluation, emotional control, never ending eagerness to get better, which is the growth mindset, right? Overpowering adversity and embracing failure and then mastering your mental imagery and self-talk. So for me, yeah, those are our key uh, um, pillars because that's what I needed as a player. I mean, I needed the self-talk. I needed the mental imagery, which I wasn't doing correctly. Emotional control. Everyone out there needs emotional control. The big things for me is, is the, the evaluations, you know, in my book, you know, the subtitles, how to prepare, compete and progress in the mental game, the prepare phase of mental performance trains, what takes place before the game. All right. The progress phase takes place after the game. So what are the, are the strategies I can give my guys to do after a game? to help them understand how they can be a better player. And then, of course, the middle of the game is the compete phase. How can we pull more out of ourselves when we're in there, okay? It's not about, you know, I've been talking about this a lot in my podcast lately. You know, you don't ever show up to a game with 100%. You really don't. You don't have 100%. So some days it's like, I'm at 80%. But what we do is we start thinking about the 20% we don't have. So give 100% of the 80% you have, okay, or whatever percent it is that you have. So yeah, that, that, that structure came based on what I was taught by Brian Kane in the MPM. Okay. It, it just opened my eyes to, and it just became clear to me. And then I, I ran with my, my, my experiences I had as a player and said, this are, these are the ones that make sense to me. And then the acronym fit. Yeah. And I know a question that came in was, you know, about like being able to take things from the 10 pillars and make your own framework. And I'm like, Hey, that's why we made the certification. We made the certification to teach you what we've been doing. And I learned from Ken Revisa over the last 20 years of doing this work myself, a thousand pro players, you know, three, hopefully four Cy Young award winners here. If Corbin gets that the next week and then guys like Zach, that are playing it and now doing it at the highest level. Like, yes, you can take the 10 pillars of, of mental performance mastery framework from the certification. Yes. You can tweak that to be your own. Yes you can take the pillars and kind of use them however you want to use them. So that's why they're there, right? We're not, we're not taking any of these things into the grave with us, man. Our goal is to give them all away, normalize mental performance training and give people the best chance for success. Speaking of best chance for success, question comes in from David Ford and he says, Zach, how do you balance boosting confidence versus needing to correct mistakes to make them better? Yeah, I think that's awesome. One thing I teach is being an honest self-evaluator. Yeah. Okay. When you do a well, better how, we're going to address the things you do well. And we're going to talk about what you're going to do better. But what it is, is, is I think what we've been programmed to do is to either say that's good or that's bad. 
Okay. And, and that's not what we're really chasing. Uh, what we're chasing is progress. And if you can get your, your players to understand our goal is progress, all of a sudden you start understanding that when you struggle, that's good. Because now you have something to go attack tomorrow, and then you're going to see progress, and you're going to get better at whatever it is. So it's not about, you know, it, it kind of goes back to the outcome. I mean, that question is kind of based on an outcome, okay? It's like, I was no good. Well, that's the outcome. Well, okay, when you start training the mental game, it's like, how are we going to attack it? So Kobe Bryant has an awesome video. We'll pull it up sometime. But Kobe Bryant has a video, and he gets asked, what does losing feel like to you? And Kobe says, it's exciting. Because that's where all the answers are. And then he breaks it down and he's like, after every single game, you go back and you look and you try to figure out what you did well, what you want to do better, and then how you can get, you know, and then how are you going to do it? He, he, so he goes through that process day in and day out. So when you can gain the trust of your players, okay, and, and I got to this point with Kyle, like in Kyle's Well Better How, he got to the point where he was writing down exactly what I showed you every single day. We would talk about it. And I would be like, man, that's great. I love your feedback. And then when he got to the point where he trusted me, he would say, what did you see? Hmm. And now all of a sudden it's opened up for me to be honest. And here's what's interesting about that. When you can establish that relationship and you can open up with honesty, the more honest you are with them, guess what? the more they embrace you and what you're doing as a coach. And that's really the case. Let me give you a quick story. And I don't want to take too much time with this. Oh, let's go. Kyle Wright goes out there and I'm breaking down. I'm doing a well, better how for him, just like he's doing a well, better how I've got two pages of notes for every single start of his. Now he was the only guy at the time I was working with. Okay. So I could do that. But the next day he'd call me and he'd be like, what do you got? And I'm like, Hey, here's one thing that I'm seeing, you know, and, and it's up to you. I'm not a pitching coach. And he's like, no, bring it. And I said, in the first inning of your start yesterday, which one of the hit hitters bothered you? He's like, well, the leadoff guy got on, but then I got a double play, so and then I punched the next guy out. So I'll have to go with the leadoff guy because he, he got a base hit. I'm like, what about inning two? And he's like, well, I walked the leadoff guy. Okay, well, what about inning three? Well, leadoff guy hit a home run. I'm like, are you seeing a trend here? Hmm. And he's like, he's like, yeah, the leadoff guy is doing damage. And I'm like, yeah, so what are we going to do about it? What's your next best move? Let's give you something to go to, right? Love it. And I said, what does your pre-inning routine look like? I said, what is your purpose? Because everything you do has to be on purpose with purpose. What are you doing when you go out there? He's like, well, I throw seven pitches. And I'm like, what's the purpose of them? He's like, well, to get loose. And I'm like, okay, we got to get loose before we go out there. Because you have to have intent once you get out there because that leadoff guy is doing damage. And so I said, have you ever done anything to get loose before you go out on the field? Well, well, back when I was at Vanderbilt, I used to take a weighted ball and I'd throw it off the wall. And I'm like, how many times? And he's like, well, what do you mean? And I'm like, how many times did you throw it off the wall? He's like, I don't know, four or five. And I'm like, how about three? Because we want three outs. Mm. Okay. So Kyle Wright goes out the next time. All of a sudden the camera, you know, goes over to him. He puts his hat on because he talked about that's a trigger that says yep. it's go time. Yep. And he walks down in the tunnel. And everyone's like, where's he going? And all of a sudden he comes out of the tunnel, boom, conviction with his warm-up pitches. And the leadoff guy did not get on base at all that mm -hmm. game. Okay, now, finish to the story. Two starts later, he's got a no-hitter through six innings or through five innings against the Boston Red mm -hmm. Sox. Okay, he goes out in the sixth inning and he's facing Jackie Bradley Jr. to lead it off. Jackie Bradley Jr. hits a home run off of him. And then the next guy hits like Dabak, hits like a double or something like that catcher goes out there and is like what's going on you're a totally different guy after the game i get a text message i need to talk to you that's all it said you know from kyle I'm like, well yeah we talk every game so he calls me up he goes guess what i went down in the tunnel and guess what happened my weighted ball was gone he's like somebody took my weighted ball and i'm like okay this is really funny i apologize i'm laughing because you had a no hitter and i said what'd you learn about last night what did you pull from that he goes two things number one is routines really help they make a difference they get you locked in where you are and i'm like what else did you learn he goes i don't know what do you got and i'm like you learned that you need a second weighted ball there's right. got to be another weighted ball yeah right, you gotta right, be able to right, adjust right. to that but yeah, two is one one is none right totally strategies yeah. though right strategies we give them routines you give them something to go to and, and because of that they can have confidence because they're prepared Love that. Love that. Zach, we'll come back here with a couple more questions. They keep coming in. Again, if you're on the call, you got specific questions for Zach Sorensen. Go ahead and drop them inside of our chat here. And just want to want to take a moment here and again, recognize that the Fundraising University and their CEO, Mike Bahoon. Fundraising University is always looking for individuals who are competitive, self-starters, empathetic, organized, and teachable to partner with. Current coaches, contact Mike Bahoon, M-B-A-H-U-N at fundraising, the letter U dot net to inquire about assistant coach or area representative positions open within Fundraising University. 
and visit fundraisingu.net slash franchising to find out more about becoming a franchise owner through Fundraising University. Zach, next question comes in uh, from, from another Zach, ironically, who was a professional baseball player. He says, you know, I played with Dansby Swanson in the Diamondbacks organization and saw him during instructional ball when he was having a really tough time mentally playing with a lot of anxiety. Not long after, he's traded to Atlanta where he went on to flourish. What are some strategies that he has been implementing into his game over the last few years that's kept him right and led to more success offensively than he's ever had? Yeah, one of the biggest things that Dansby has done, and I haven't spent a ton of time working with Dansby, but I know he is heavy into meditation, mm. okay? And and I think that that's one thing I've really been studying more and more and more is how can we implement meditation with our players? And what I found out is when I do what, what we call a confidence conditioning meditation or a ball meditation, which is uh, breathing, affirmations, look back, look forward, okay, with my players, they are blown away by this exercise. So mm -hmm. I think that's the number one thing that Dansby has done is uh, – uh, you know, he, he's used some binaural beats and, and bilateral music to be able to help him relax and calm down. The next thing, you know, and I saw this in the World Series, and these are some of the messaging that I sent to my guys, and this may be fun for you guys to hear, but one thing about the World Series is, is this is the best of the best, okay? And, and sometimes I understand as a player going through a long season, you're like, man, you know, if I can get one hit in my next four ABs, or if I can do this, or if I can do that, then it's going to kind of even things out, and my, my, my things are going to be the same. The World Series is, is going to be one, maybe one play in the game, maybe two plays in the game, okay? So the number one goal for the guys, and the message I, keep, I kept hitting these guys with is – you have got to be where your feet are. You have got to be present. You have got to play this game one pitch at a time. So, and maybe this is, is a good time. Hopefully, I, I know you guys have lots of questions, but I think this is really cool for me to share with you some of the last couple messages I sent on a daily basis to the players, okay? Perfection is the enemy of being present. Your routine gets you to the starting line. The routine gets you to the best place you can be at that time. Sometimes you have to adapt and adjust, Focus on being present, not perfect. Being present allows you to be free. Aggressive is the opposite of perfect. Focusing on the perfect pitch kills. Be present, not perfect. Give 100% of what you have to win this pitch. Be where your feet are, free and easy, aggressive in the moment. Mm. So yeah, that, went out to, that went out to Kyle Wright, the hitting coach, You know some of the players before one of the games. And the last one, let's go. I said, Focus, focusing on winning championships is too big. Focusing on winning games is too big. Focusing on having a good outing is too big. The focus has to be pitch by pitch on a stage like this. Man. Same focus, same composure, same adaptability, same emotion, and then a fist bump. Love that. And, and you know, it's funny, Zach, you mentioned that you mentioned about Dan's being kind of competitiveness. Here's his interview. I'm not sure which game this is after. You'll know which one. But yeah. here he is talking about in a podcast. Uh, I'm sorry, in a Twitter video here, you, I want you to listen to this and kind of break this down, um, you know, of him, him talking about uh, just competing, letting go of the fluff, letting go of the outcome and just competing. In that moment, I think the compete factor is, is what kind of went through the roof. I, I, this game, it, it's so funny. It can, be, it can be such a challenging game. It can be so hard and we can get so caught up in, in results. We can get so caught up in and everything else, but the real thing that matters is playing the game to win and competing to win. Uh, and, and so I feel like that's just where I went. It's like, you know what? Let's get rid of everything else and let's just compete. And some amazing happened. Right. Let's get when he says, let's get rid of everything else and just compete. Zach, what's he talking about? Getting rid of what? Yeah. So in, in my opinion, and I'm going to throw that question right back to you, Kane, but we work so hard to get everybody prepared to play in so many different aspects. Okay. We talk about batting practice. We talk about ground balls. We talk about all this stuff and that's all very, very important. We do the same thing with mental performance training. When the lights go on and they throw the first pitch, it's about competing. That's why we do all the training so that we can just compete. Okay. And here's why you have to focus on winning. All right. Sometimes we're like, well, you know, maybe he's focused on everything else and this and that, but you have to focus on winning. If you don't focus on winning every single pitch, the only thing that you're guaranteed is that you'll be a loser. Mm -hmm. How about that? So that's what we see in Dansby. We see Dansby going out. He puts everything to his, to the side. He forgets that he hasn't, you know, he's won for 18 in the world, in the world series thus far, because in that moment, when the game when in game four, okay. When the Braves are losing two to one, and Dansby's up to bat. It doesn't matter that he's won for his last 18. Guess what matters? This pitch. 
And when you compete pitch by pitch by pitch, you have a chance to do what Dansby did. And he hits a home run opposite field and ties the game up for the Braves. And, and they end up winning that huge game, which propels him in. And, and eventually, I think, helps them win the World Series because of that game. Love it, Zach. I want to get one more question that came in, and then I'm going to take all the questions that we do have because there's been a lot that we haven't had the chance to get to. Uh, and I want to be respectful of your time. I'll take those questions. I'll send those to you from our chat here, and then hopefully maybe you can answer those uh, inside of Perfect. the Hard 90 podcast You know, as we move forward. So I want to make sure everybody checks that out on uh, wherever you listen to your, po your, your podcast, the Hard 90. Also, you can get the recording of this call on the Coaching Matters Group Coaching Podcast. Zach, last question comes in from Taylor Armstrong and he said, Zach, congrats on the world series win. Do you go to players with recommendations for mental performance or do you let them come to you? Great question. Yeah. Great question. And, and for me, you know, because I had the experience as a player, I think that that, that little, you know, wall is a little bit shorter and, and I can get to them again. I'm going to go back to the three things that they need from you. Okay. If they trust you, if they know that you care about them and they know they're going to help you, they're going to start coming to you, but you pick and, and choose the right times where you can go and establish that. So my focus isn't on delivering my message. that's going to change their life right away. My focus is on those three things. And I, you can make that happen. Like when I was with Texas, they said, Hey, it's going to take this whole year to establish this relationship, you know? So just don't even talk about mental performance training, just work on the relationship. And I'm like, this guy's going to get released next week. I have to establish those three things with him today, okay, so that we can start talking about mental performance from there. Here's my thing. Figure out the one thing that you feel like can really help that player, introduce them to it, and they're going to see it work, and then all of a sudden it just opens up for you to be able to teach them what you want to teach them. Talk about that one thing, Zach. Here's my one last thing. thing for you here, man. If we could remove the skull cap, remove that Atlanta Braves cap, and plant one seed inside of your head about mental performance coaching because – the coaches that are on this call, the over 100 coaches that joined us today to, to interact with you and to hear your story and hear your system and strategy, they can all be mental performance coaches. You know, in our certification, which you can get into at briancane.com slash certification, join our insiders list. It opens up next week. We'd love to have you with us as you've been with us, one of the first coaches to get certified. What's the one seed that you would like to leave all of our listeners with tonight, Zach? If you could remove the skull cap and plant one seed, what would it be? Yeah, I've hit this a bunch, but I'm going to go back to the same thing I tell my players, and that's control what you can control. And some of the things that you can control in your life are your routines, you know, the, the information that you're bringing in. And what you need to understand is like we talked about, mental performance training is not taught. And so when you start teaching it, guess what? You're the expert. Okay, you are the expert and you can impact lives up and down the field and, and, and not even on the field. Okay. You're going to change people's lives on and off the field. And, and, and you can do that. It's time for you to dive in, to gather these strategies, to implement them in your life. Okay. And then you're going to be influential. How do you do it? I think you do it with passion. Okay. I, and just like you guys know, why do we love Brian Kane? Because the passion he brings, the energy he brings day in and day out. I tried to bring the same level of energy and I, I couldn't do it. Okay. I tried and I couldn't do it, but I found where I live and where I live is I'm super passionate about caring about my players, about establishing trust. Okay. And getting them to the point where they know that I can help them to get better. Every single time they go out there and perform, I'm performing with them. These are my guys. These are my gals. Okay. And I'm super passionate about them. And everything you do is on purpose with purpose. Be where your feet are. So one last thing I thought was pretty funny. We saw someone throw in the chat right there, my book, and, and you're going to need to do the homework on it. Here's your homework assignment. When you get to, you know, Amazon, you're going to buy the book. Everything you do is on purpose with purpose. It costs $14.24 to purchase the hard 90. And your job is to figure out why it's $14.24. Uh, and we'll, we'll leave it at that. I see some smiles on the computer. Randy Bolton, Russ Waterman, Chris Andrews, Marty, other guys. I know exactly where you're going with that. There it is. 1% better. We'll leave it at that. Zach, man humbled to call you a friend, humbled to have you on the call tonight. So awesome. And so excited for you as a guy, you know, who, um, played major league baseball and now got a chance to be a part of a world series organization and play a role in that. So thank you for, for your always willingness to give back to the game, to help mentor and grow coaches. And thanks for being here as a part of the coaching matters group coaching program and, uh, looking forward to getting you back on, man. That was just tremendous. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks you all for all you do continue to impact, make a difference out there and get in the game. Dominate the day. Thanks for being here and coaching matters. Take care, everybody.